welcome to quality food safety 101 today we have a special video planned on the occasion of uh, world food safety day and we have a special guest with us uh, chef paul uh, morris thank you chef for joining us you're welcome uh, so chef has uh, an experience of more than 39 years uh, 38 39 years and he is regarded as one of the top most chef chefs in the in the industry in ue and worldwide so we'll take his point of view on the food safety aspects of the kitchen home cooking as well as uh, industry so chef thank you very much for joining us uh, uh, so today uh, just please for the, our viewers introduce yourself a little bit your experience from where did you started and what is your passion about food basically okay um like you said i've been doing this for 39 years um i do this because i love what I do for a living. I love cooking. I love entertaining people. Yeah. Um, I've enjoyed multiple cuisines. I've been very fortunate to have traveled the world learning different cuisines in different countries. Um, I spend a lot of time uh, working in other restaurants. I've owned my own restaurants. Um, I've owned my own production business. Um, now I enjoy uh, creating uh, menus and recipes, uh, creating food, um, trying not to duplicate, but being very creative. Uh, you don't have to be young to be creative. Yes, absolutely. Um, a, a good day for me is the day I get to cook. Bad day Amazing. is the day I don't get to cook. Amazing. So I enjoy what I do. Um, never really think about doing vacations or anything else because I love so much of, of showing up at the kitchen every day. So 39 years and counting now, right now, Chef. So what, uh, what, what keeps this passion alive, basically? Again, it's, it's a desire to, uh, to better myself. Uh, yeah. You make a lot of mistakes um, when you're young. Uh, the thing is, is you learn from those. So as you get older, you make fewer mistakes yeah. uh, because you've already had the experience. Yes. Um, and it gives you a, a, a passion to go out and experiment to kind of push the limits yeah. um, because you know the mistakes, mm -hmm. you know what you can't do. Yeah. And so, you know, you learn how to, uh, how to do that. Every day is a challenge. Every day yeah. walking into a kitchen is what's going to be new today? What, what is a new flavor? What is a new taste? How can I combine um, ingredients yeah. to make something different and new? Okay. Um, techniques. All the techniques are, are the same. There's nothing yeah. new. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing new. Sous vide has been around forever. Um, you know, just that the internet has made it become more, uh, you know, the, the farm to table. Yeah. I, was, I had a farm to table restaurant over 25 years ago. Wow. But there was no internet. Yes. So, you know, it's like I tell people I was a, a celebrity to my customers. Yeah. Uh, because there were no TV shows. There were no. Um, you know, no internet of promoting yourself or anything yeah. else. So you just had to create really good food yeah. uh, to stay in business. So yeah. I think that's a big difference. Yeah. Uh, we don't, we did not have the internet to, uh, to fall back on, mm -hmm. uh, for information. Yes. Yeah, so uh, a good taste and the f good food was the fallback. Well, quality yeah. ingredients, yes. quality ingredients always. Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm known for that. I don't yes. compromise yeah. uh, my ingredients. I don't compromise. Uh, the product that I create, yeah. um, you know, I do know how to, again, uh, produce food at price points. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I may use a lesser quality of product based on a customer's desire or demands of, mm -hmm. you know, of a price point. Yeah. They need it within a price range. And then I okay. have to create uh, doing that. Um, Look, uh, so Chef, uh, we will like to later on take your all the social media accounts and put them in the video also so that people can follow you. Now we are in the okay. age of internet, as you said. But yeah, it's a very interesting point you made that uh, in 39 years, you have relied on the quality of ingredients, quality of the food, and then of course, uh, become a uh, true master chef in your field. So I'm just putting you on the spot. If I had asked you top three dishes which you have created, what which top three will you name? Oh God! This is a <laughs> difficult question, I know, but just top maybe three. in the past five years, not thirty-nine years. Top three dishes I have created. Um, I, I 
not being not you know I, what I get what I create I, I eat you yeah. know I, I mean you know I, I, I don't create something that I won't eat yeah. that I won't serve to you know serve to a customer or serve to um, you know a friend or a close uh, friend of mine um, so I feel every dish is special because that you put so much of yourself into it you put yeah. so much of your your love into it uh, when I do a tasting yeah uh, tastings are very draining uh, they because you're you're exposing yourself mm -hmm. uh, in your dish yeah so every every dish you put in front of someone uh, and people criticize uh, becomes a personal issue yeah uh, you have to put that aside yeah. uh, because you have to be you know uh, objective about what you're doing but I don't think there's any one dish mm -hmm. um, you know I mean I, I, I cook what I like and I cook but I don't cook for myself okay. no chef does we cook for other people of course but in your home what is the most common thing which you cook for yourself <laughs> hot dog, <laughs> hot dog. <laughs> no ser seriously the same yeah. thing you ask any chef they don't they don't sit at home yeah cooking I yeah. mean if I know I'm cooking for another person or I'm cooking for uh, some friends yes I will go all out of course you know and put everything into it mm -hmm. but cooking for myself that's not what I'm that's not what I do I of cook course, for other yeah. people of course and you cook to make other people feel good yes yeah they reminisce about something in their in their past that yeah. they enjoyed yeah, this is very true because I also feel when the food is very good, it, it makes you really happy. You know, there is a smile on your face which you cannot get rid of. Yeah. So that's something. Well, the Disney movie Ratatouille, yeah. the Disney yeah. movie, yeah. Ratatouille, you yes. know, the, the final scene with the critic and all this stuff mm -hmm. and everything else, you know, he creates a peasant dish. Yeah. You know, the Ratatouille. Yeah. He creates a peasant dish yeah. in this magnificent restaurant yeah. and serves it to a food critic. Food critic yeah. Uh, that has you know a bad reputation and so you know what he did is you know you go back to your roots you go back to you know the most simplistic meal mm -hmm. is actually the most complex yeah that's true that's true. because you are exposing that meal that yeah. Is, yeah, so you know you brought back in that movie you know he brought back uh, the little mouse yeah uh, brought back um, you know childhood memories yes. to, the, to the critic and yes. to people and they it was just something it hit them in their stomach with their heart. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know that's what you try to do Amazing. with every dish. Amazing. So, chef, coming to the topic of this World Food Safety Day. So, I have very little experience as compared to you yourself. I have only like 12, 13 years experience. But in this time also, I have seen tremendous changes in food safety, think process. Everything is like uh, a lot of changes are there. What have you experienced with regards to then when you started, now when you are an expert chef and in the middle, what are the different uh, trends you have seen in food safety and how do you see like now what has happened or happening to food safety and uh, what do you think about all of this basically? Well, I, I, I think, I think as, as, a, as a population, mm -hmm. I think we've become paranoid. I think we've... Uh, We've looked at you know uh, things that we try to overprotect. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I I've always you know like I said I, I wash my hands more than a surgeon does. Yeah. I mean more than a doctor. Uh, you know yeah. when I was in a, a kitchen, yes, I didn't have to worry about wearing. We didn't wear gloves. Yeah, you know we washed our hands and and we 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 did this because. We were serving other people. We were, you know, we were trying to give people the best experience possible. Mm -hmm. uh, you never, in 38 years, I, you know, I've never uh, known of anybody that I've injured or hurt yeah. or made sick. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're not producing food, uh, you know, you're not going to have uh, issues. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, again, we're overprotecting, mm -hmm. and I think we get a a false sense of security mm. you know people think they see somebody with gloves on mm -hmm. that that's food safe yeah but they don't understand that there's a procedure putting the glove on yeah 
washing, sanitizing, then putting the glove on, yeah. and then being careful to what you handle with the gloves. Absolutely, yes. That's very true. You're just because you have a pair of gloves on doesn't mean it's, you know, that it's food safe. So yeah. Yeah. I think I've seen a lot of this, uh, I, I think, paranoia. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I, I think we need to get, you know, we understand that, you know, there are rules and regulations that are put in place of temperatures and timing. All this stuff is very critical. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I don't cook a, a meat product or fish or chicken or anything without checking of the course. temperature. Of course, I don't look at it. I don't just touch it. Mm. You know, I I make sure that it is the correct temperature. Yeah, the thermometer with everything. Yeah. 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 So you know, again, there's. I like that that this has come about. Mm -hmm. You know that that people are more conscious of, you know, cooking the food yeah. correctly, yeah. and a lot of this is because we have you don't have as many trained yeah. chefs. Yeah, that's true. In a kitchen nowadays, yeah. um, we're expensive. Mm. Um, you know, we have experience, we have time, uh, we have education, we have knowledge. Yeah, uh, that that has a value, of course. Um, so people hire lesser expensive uh, staff. Mm -hmm. And that staff, you know, has limitations. Yeah. One thing also, Chef, what I've observed is that before, uh, when before this whole conglomerate of cities uh, emerged, like Dubai is like a conglomerate of like 150 nationalities, and same as my home country, Karachi, people coming from all over Pakistan to that one city. Before that happened, things were much much more simpler. You are uh, serving essentially to a population which you know or maybe which have been grown in the same environment and the ingredients which are using are natively sourced so it's easy to control uh, the health risk and the hygiene and everything but now since uh, we are living in, in a situation that multiple nationalities and cultures are coming together then you go to a Chinese restaurant and most probably the chef cooking in that restaurant might not be Chinese and might not be even using Chinese authentic ingredients and might not be even cooking them the way they're supposed to be yeah. and as a result the whole risk factor changes and for me I'm not a Chinese person so for me the risk of allergy to those ingredients or sensitivity will be different also because I've ne maybe never eaten those things before so I think due to that the risk factor has changed what do you think about that aspect of current situation food safety yeah I mean I, you know I'm an American yeah um, but I I live here in the Middle East. I've been told I make be better Arab food than most Arabs. <laughs> yes. Uh, when I was in Kuwait, uh, you know, during Ramadan, we cooked yeah. uh, for the people who were not, you know, not Muslim. And, and again, this was in a two-story building, so downstairs was the kitchen. So I, I, you know, most of the staff upstairs was Indian, mm -hmm. uh, and they told me that I cook better Indian food than your mother. Yeah. So you know, I think. If you know the techniques, yeah. you know the ingredients, mm -hmm. uh, you know the taste of the people you're you're cooking for. I don't think it really matters. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. cooking American or Chinese or or Indian or Pakistani. You know, I just think you have to make sure that you're you're satisfying the market that you're reaching for. Yeah. Um, Coming back to the point of the gloves which you mentioned i just recalled day before yesterday i was one at one restaurant so this uh, server was wearing gloves and hair net and everything but her gloves were torn off yeah damaged i've seen so, that so so i really endorse this point that yes uh, you know wearing gloves uh, the customer feel more reassured with that but when did you last change your gloves yeah uh, maybe you didn't change for past three hours and in the middle you went for a smoke also and you know you can damage and your i've gloves. seen that yeah we I've have seen, seen that. that yes we have all seen that yeah so yeah that's a very very point chef uh, okay so in in your experience now since because we are in uae uh, there's a lot of regulations also with regards to food safety which is absolutely you know, which is essential also and uh, uh, this is one of the key things which, which keeps all of us in good health and check also. So what do you think is in your kitchen when you preach to your young uh, apprentices? What are the key hygiene rules you tell them that okay, this is something which I will never uh, you know, have compromise on. This is the red line. Beyond this, you are not part of my team basically. This is, you know, you have to do this. Otherwise, don't stay in my kitchen. Well, first of all, there's no five second rule. Okay. 
Okay, and you know what I mean yes, by that. Yes, yes, Okay, so there is no five second rule. Yeah. If something hits the floor, it goes in the yes, trash. Of course, done. Yeah. Um, you know, and again, a lot of restaurants don't follow. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. They, it, so it's it's a joke at, within the industry a five second rule, yeah. but there is no five second rule. Of course. Uh, the other thing is, is I always emphasize to my staff, uh, cook the food as if you're cooking it for your mother. Absolutely. Okay. If you won't serve it to your mother, yeah, you won't serve it to your customer. Absolutely. Yeah. And I've, I, 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 just I reemphasize that all the time, mm -hmm. and you know, making them understand that if they don't serve it to their family, their mother, their child, then don't serve it to the customer. Okay. So you know, making sure that that you that everything you do, mm -hmm. you know, has this in mind that that you're preparing this for a close member of your family, yeah. a dear loved one that you would not dare, you know, give them, you know, something to harm them. Yeah. Uh, once you put this into your staff's uh, psyche and mm -hmm. you keep reinforcing this, yeah. you keep reinforcing this, they become the same way. They start yeah. correcting each other. Yeah. And so um, I, make, I make sure that my staff, whether it's production or restaurant or whatever, that my staff supervise and police themselves. Yeah, that's true. You know, yeah, we have a, a, a hygiene manager mm -hmm. uh, that goes around and does their job, but they can't be in every place in a kitchen every minute. Absolutely. Yeah. So you you have to instill, I feel, of, of a uh, respect for the food in your staff. Yeah. And respect for who they're serving that food yeah, to. Respect for the customer. Uh, that they, you know, it becomes second nature to them. Absolutely. That you don't have to remind them. Yeah, yeah that's true. So, Chef, you just quickly mentioned restaurant and production. So, you have experience, vast experience of both the uh, arenas of the business that uh, especially as restaurant is serving certain customers, certain food. And then there is mass production which you are serving to maybe a catering company or through a uh, retail chain. What is the key difference in these two? Like, like how how the food safety changes in these two aspects? The basic rules don't change, but what are the things you see differently in a mass production? Let's suppose you are making uh, thousand uh, you know pretzels to be served to a catering event or maybe to a retail chain, and then making maybe five steaks in a restaurant in a day. What are the differences in these? Well, production is something you have to constantly be on top of. That people don't try to cut corners, yeah. you know, True. and I, and that can be in anything. It can be yeah. in in production. It can be in, in food safety. Anything, yeah, you know, because they've got to turn out a thousand or five hundred or five thousand, whatever they have to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so people, you know, try to look for a faster, or easier way to do something. Okay, and that doesn't make it right. Yeah, and so you know they may not follow the rules mm -hmm. in in that situation. On the other hand, you get in the same situation in a restaurant mm -hmm. when they get in what we call the weeds. Yeah. Okay. Which means you know you're in over your head. Yeah. You're under um, the pressure. Yeah. So yeah. They're, they're in the pressure to get the food out. Yeah. And so again, the both situations become almost the same. Mm -hmm. One is based on volume. One is based on volume of customers or, yeah. or orders. Um, so you have to. I don't think there's any difference. Mm. Other than you have to get pe keep people focused. If you're an executive chef in a restaurant, your job is to keep your staff and your team focused on getting the orders out yeah. and getting them out in a timely fashion mm. so that all the food comes out and served to a table yeah. at the same time. Yeah. In production, uh, it's getting the job done mm -hmm. within the time frame allotted. Mm -hmm. um, so. You know, does, I, does the number of people make a difference? Because generally in production, when we talk about, we talk about more number of people, bigger area, maybe multiple rooms. And when we talk about a, a kitchen, uh, it's a single uh, working unit, less number of people. So does the number of people make a difference for an executive chef? Or a, no, I, I think in a, in a production ca capacity, a, a production unit, like I said, you teach your people to police themselves. Yeah. So you have more people watching each other. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so I, I, I think in a production because production has, you know, I think uh, 
less room for movement. Uh, okay. You know, you've got you're producing a thousand of an item. It has to be a thousand copies. Yeah. Yeah. of an item yeah. and everyone has to be aware of this and everyone is on top of it it's not one person mm. um in a in a restaurant you have the executive chef or the past chef mm -hmm. you know the one that the dishes come to before yeah. they go out yeah uh that checks the dishes yeah um so you have one person that is yeah, responsible. The past chef is there yes you know yeah. so you have that one person that is responsible for the food going out yeah versus in a production area you have multiple people in charge. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe each step is checked by somebody. Yeah. Oh, you have you have head chefs, you have production chefs, you have you know mm -hmm. the, the helpers, the, the packagers, the yeah. you know all the different aspects. So you have multiple people looking at what's mm -hmm. going on. Yeah. Uh, to make sure that you have the consistency. Yeah. Okay, chef. In your history, do you remember any food poisoning case? Not with you, but with any. Uh, other chefs or any anything which stick to your mind that oh, that happened there and this is like they must have done a very bad job <laughs> to cause this food poisoning. <laughs> um, no, because I won't talk about another chef. Okay. <laughs> in in UAE also chef the uh, in UAE also the food safety scene has really become developed in past uh, decade or so. Uh, if you if you notice Dubai, Abu Dhabi, all the all the Emirates have their uh, own regulations, yeah. rules, trainings. So, what is your opinion about about this? That uh, should this be a unified approach? Should each Emirate have their own regulations? What is as a as a professional who is working in multiple Emirates uh, a lot of time? Well, how, for UAE, what are the challenges in this? For UAE, to me, it should be a, a standardized food safety regulation for the whole country. Yeah. It should not be regionalized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what's allowed in one should be the same in the other. Yeah. Um, I equate it to the speed limit in, in Dubai versus the speed limit Abu in Abu Dhabi. Dhabi. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it it should be the, the same you know, regulations mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah. Um, I think there needs to be a little bit more realism in some of our regulations mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um you know as we've talked before yeah. uh you know himalayan sea salt takes three million years to develop and it's going to expire tomorrow <laughs> uh you know these type of things yeah. i mean honey five thousand year old honey found in egypt and it's still edible yeah and we and everyone knows that honey is antibacterial yes that nothing will grow no yeah. mold no bacteria will grow Absolutely. with honey uh so there is no expiration but yeah. Again, it comes back to you know an attempt to uh, keep the public safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you know they put the regulations in place. Um, I'm glad we we I, I think we're more strict here than than mm -hmm. some other countries I've worked in. Yep. yep. Um, so I I actually applaud the the government for Amazing. you know how strict they are and and the regulations they've set. Uh, some of them again to a chef don't make any sense mm -hmm. uh, like I said like the expiration dates on yeah. certain items yeah uh, but as far as you know food temperatures you know uh, shelf life yeah all of these things um, you know do you regularly get visited your facility gets visited by the municipality because since you are in Dubai do you, do you visit your facility regularly oh yeah yeah, yeah you, you see Baladi all the time and yeah I just I've always been of the mindset you know, show up when you want to show up. Of it doesn't course. matter to me. The yeah. rest, my my kitchen is going to be the same yeah. whether you I know you're coming or I don't know you're coming. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's not clean. It's it's not clean, but it it should be clean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you know, I've always been this way. Um, one of the companies I was working for, we uh, produced products for uh, some major chains, yeah. uh, franchise chains here mm -hmm. uh, in Dubai. Yeah. And you know, I, I always told their 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 uh, quality control people, their uh, food safety managers, et cetera, show up whenever you want to show up. You yeah. know, I really don't care. Amazing. Um, you know, because the, the, it should be, ex you know, it should be correct all the time yeah. anyway. So whenever we are producing, it should be the same, correct? Yeah. So Chef, one quick discussion about one more thing that since you are in the industry for 39 years and there is a misconception in the mind of people that let's say if somebody gets food poisoning they will it will be only from outside food but we know 
it can happen from any food it can be from home to food also uh, and it, in many cases it happens from home to food but we don't realize it or we don't go about suing our mothers and sisters who cook the food so what advice do you give to a normal home cook person that what are the key factors they need to follow to make sure that they don't harm their family friends and themselves while you know from food well two things one is to get food poisoning yeah. of any kind yeah it has to go through the digestive system, absolutely. which doesn't happen in 30 minutes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So you can't eat something and get food poisoning from eating it right now and then food yeah. poisoning in 30 minutes or yeah. five minutes or even a day sometimes. It depends yeah. on, you know, what caused the food poisoning, you know. So this is a missed, a problem within our food industry yeah. is people come, oh, I got sick from your food. No, because I don't know what other food you ate. I don't know when you ate. Yeah. You know, again, I need to know. You know the digestive process yeah. you know don't don't start pointing fingers at the restaurant yeah when it could have been something you ate for breakfast at your house absolutely or whatever so to to people preparing at home one is a clean work surface yeah meaning that you wipe the surface down before you work okay making sure that all your tools knives cutting boards whatever are clean wiped sanitized yeah um Making sure that the knives are cleaned, yeah. even in the lower part where it comes into the handle, yeah, where yeah. where food can get trapped. Of course, um, I think the other thing is is people people cooking at home don't wear gloves, yeah, and they cross contaminate by handling two or three, four items. They will handle unwashed vegetables or or uh, fruits, yeah, and then they will go over and do something else without washing their hands, yeah, or they'll handle chicken. Yeah, or beef, yeah. and then come over and handle the vegetables. vegetables. Yeah, uh, so it's not necessary that they have to wash like a surgeon, mm -hmm. but they need to make sure that they're not cross contaminating. Yeah, so not carrying bacteria from one food to the other food. Yeah, basically. definitely. Yeah. And you know, same thing. Even even opening a jar. Yeah, you know, if you've just process something in your hands and you open the jar now you've got contamination inside the jar there is that possibility and then it will last for a long time in that yeah, yeah. and it can grow and grow and grow yeah. inside the jar so again you take a, a new jar of something you take a spoon mm -hmm. that you've used for something else you wipe it off yeah. not wash it yeah. now you have the potential of cross contamination of the whole jar of course yeah, yeah. you know that that first that first spoonful going into whatever you're cooking um, will not injure somebody. Yeah. It's that third or fourth spoonful mm, yeah, that, after a month yeah. or two months or whatever. Yeah. And, and again, this is the other thing is people um, leave food way too long yeah. in the chiller. Okay. Open food mm. um, you know, that has possibly been cross-contaminated. Mm -hmm. You see people using mayonnaise. Yeah. You know, with the same spoon, same the fork, knife, whatever they, you know, and it's it's like, you know, instead of buying the big size, they need to buy the small size more often. Yeah. That's I know true. it's more expensive that way. Yeah. But you have less chance of contamination. Yeah. That's true. Um, you know, we we as the food mm. industry, you know, we buy large quantity because we're making large volume. Yeah. But we don't use. You know, our, our mayonnaise is, is a liter, liter yeah. and a half, two liters. It has to consume maybe in one or two shifts. Yeah, it's before. it's gone it's gone in one or two days. Yeah. Okay. It's not we take five hundred grams out of there and it sits for three months. Yeah. Um, you know, that doesn't work in a in a kitchen. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, chef, there is in regards to food quality, now food safety we have touched multiple aspects of food safety. In regards to food quality and ingredient quality. What are the key things you look at in your, uh, as you said, that you never compromise on quality? What are the key indicators you look for in ingredient quality? I, I purchase the best quality that I can get. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if I'm, if I'm cooking uh, beef, I want, you know, a certified uh, Black Angus beef because mm -hmm. I know it's going to have the most flavor. Yeah. But again, that may not give me the if you go into markets here, yeah. you can see Indian beef, New Zealand beef, Australian yes. beef, U.S. beef. Yes. You, know, you can see all the different kinds. Well, each one of them is going to have a different flavor. Of course. Profile. So if I'm cooking, you know, 
kafta, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to worry about it, whether it's American beef or, you know, Brazilian beef or, you know, I'm going to use something because there's so many spices and so much yeah. added into it that, that the beef flavor isn't actually going to affect, that you know, the finished sure. product. Yeah. So again, I, to me, it's, it's not necessarily paying the most mm -hmm. for something, but it's getting the best of what you get. Mm -hmm. I don't buy uh, lean beef. I buy full fat beef, okay. uh, ground minced yeah. meat, yeah. Um, you know, because I want that fat flavor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm a firm believer in, um, you know, eating smaller portions of really good food. Okay. Um, you know, there's, you know, there's the thing of, of light orange juice. Well, light orange juice is orange juice with water. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, I mean, again, just, just drink orange juice, even though it has a high sugar content, drink less. Yeah. Because yeah. it's natural. Yeah. I, I had rather, I had rather use full flavor mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. product. Yeah. Uh, I think that's where, you know, compromising is, is, is also, if you have a flavor profile, mm -hmm. I always use the, the adage, mayonnaise is not mayonnaise. Every mayonnaise has a different flavor profile. Absolutely. Yeah. So every brand of mayonnaise has its own flavor. Mm -hmm. Every mayonnaise is not the same. Yeah. So you have to find what works in your dish mm -hmm. to give you the flavor you're looking for and the quality, meaning the creaminess. Yeah. So you need to find the flavor and you need to find the texture. So again, it's if you're cooking at home, mm -hmm. don't skimp on the quality of the, of the food because to me, a, a full quality piece of minced meat burger, mm -hmm. okay, um, you know, made versus a low fat or no fat or whatever mm -hmm. burger, uh, you know, the, the one is one is flavorful filling and, and gives you comfort level. Yeah. The other one is just something to eat. Yeah, just to, okay. yeah. Agree, agree. It fills you up, agree, agree. but it doesn't give you that pleasure. You know, I believe, you know, that a lot of chefs have lost uh, the talent or art of cooking. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they, uh, they go in, they have powdered, uh, beef flavor, powdered chicken flavor. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's in a, it's in a cardboard container, yeah. you know, 20 grams and, in 500 milliliters of uh, water and you have chicken stock yeah or beef stock yeah my beef stock takes 10 hours to make yeah so my chicken stock takes you know takes about six hours to make yeah well you're cooking from the actual chicken meat. yeah so again it's it's i i agree i don't have a problem with additives as long as you you get the flavor you're looking for mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know beef beef stock in the in the in the containers first ingredient is salt yeah okay yeah. and then like the fifth ingredient is artificial beef flavor mm -hmm. or artificial chicken flavor mm -hmm. okay there's no vegetables there's no tomato paste there's no bones there's no beef you know there's nothing there yeah so again i additive if it gives you the flavor you're looking for then yeah. i don't have an issue with it yeah if if it doesn't then to me do it without the additives absolutely but where you know what do we what do we buy that doesn't have some kind of additive additive yeah absolutely. i mean even your chicken that you buy has has been washed with a with a, a salt brine yeah um you know same thing with you know you buy seafood shrimp yeah you know shrimp is is brined in in salt water yeah uh so you know you're you're buying like 30 percent water mm -hmm. content after you cook it um so it's in this day and age it's hard yeah an apple to me is not what an apple is to you okay because we're two different generations i yeah. was raised you know on apples picked off a tree yeah uh you know and they weren't gmo they weren't anything else but we also didn't have the population we have nowadays right now. to feed of course yeah that's, that's so true. you know again i i'm not i'm not anti anything mm -hmm. The, the billions of dollar industry of organic foods, yeah. you know, what is organic? You know, um, I mean, there are rules and regulations that differ from country to country. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's a multi, multi hundreds of billions of dollar mm -hmm. industry. 
uh, that they keep promoting. Yeah. You know, is it healthier? I don't think so. So, explain on the same topic. So, do you think that food industry has become too commercialized? Instead of just being with the simple pleasure of cooking for somebody, it's become too commercialized, too profit driven? It's profit driven. I mean, that's, that's what all businesses are. The restaurants are profit driven. I think, I think the food industry has become too faddish. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen all these fads come and go mm -hmm. and come and go again. <laughs> uh, you know, again, there is nothing new. Yeah. Um, you know, keto, you know, I, I used to be a long distance competitive runner, you know, 45 years ago or whatever. Um, you know, we were doing keto dieting then. Mm -hmm. You know, keto diet now. I mean, it's nothing new. Okay. So everything is cyclical. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I feel that um, I feel that that the food industry is trying to make profit, of course. Mm -hmm. um, I think some of them are sacrificing again, as we've talked, quality mm. for the the price. Yeah. But then some of them have not change the quality yeah they've reduced the package size and charges the same amount of money yeah um we were had an argument uh, an argument uh, an agreement a disagreement the other night and i i was showing somebody's an ice cream mm -hmm. you know and the ice cream bar has gotten smaller and they used to pack six now they're packed five mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they've reduced the size yeah um, you know they're trying to keep it within the market range of the yeah, you know, the consumer, true. That's true. not saying, oh, I can't afford that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, again, I mean, at my age, I, you know, what I paid a nickel for for a candy bar is twice the size of what you pay, you know, a dollar or, I mean, a deer hum yeah. for, you know. Chef, you mentioned one point before, and as you are developing food from multiple different other companies, other uh, Cultures, you know, cultures, restaurants, yeah. food chains, and all. And there's always a pressure from the final customer. Uh, they might not be the consumer; they might be your client. That you know, you have to get the recipe within this price point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and sometimes it might not be possible. So, at which stage you will say that look, this is the best we can get in this price point. After that, it will like take your quality really down the hill. And I will not be a part of that. Is there has there been a scenario where you have said no? I cannot be part of this project anymore because you are asking for an unrealistic price for me. Again, we're going back. We're talking profitability. Yeah. You know, we have to look at. There is a point at which I will not compromise again, yeah. um, even at price. Yeah. Um, but I have to look at my cost, mm -hmm. and I have to you know what the customer is trying to sell it for. Yeah. Um, maybe unrealistic mm -hmm. price point they may want they may have a price point in their head but that is unachievable mm -hmm. even if i cut my profit uh we're all here to make a living yeah of course uh, so there's a point at which i say either i've reached the end of my you know profit cutting mm -hmm. uh you know then the customer has to look at can they take less yeah if not, then they have two choices: either raise the price yeah. of the of the product, or you don't do the product. Yeah, of course. You know, I mean, yeah, there is a point at which I will say I I can't do it. Yeah, and I will I can't I can't lose money. I mean, I can't afford to lose money just to produce something. Of course. And you know, so again, a lot of times is um, the customer's expectations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't match the, yeah, the product. Yeah, you know. So again, it, it's 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 working with the customer. I think it's mm -hmm. that's the key factor. Is working closely, customer. Yeah, you know, with the, with my customer. Yeah, um, and trying to look at can we sell, can we charge less, but make a better product and sell more. Yeah, that's true. Okay, we may cut the price by two dirhams on the retail side. Mm -hmm. That being that the the my customer makes 
10% less profit. Mm -hmm. I've got mine down, but we make a product so good yeah, you sell more. that instead of selling 100, you sell 200. Yeah, yeah. So everybody makes more money, of course, yeah. So coming towards the end, uh, Chef, have you ever uh, fired any of your staff for any gross quality or food safety negligence? Have I ever fired? Most of my staff is afraid of me. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but I mean, they, again, I, you know, when you come across with, you know, the passion that I have for food and the passion I have for what I do, um, I instill that into my staff that they have this passion. Yeah. You know, if they want to just collect a paycheck, go somewhere else. Of course. You know, I will fire somebody for that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to me, the first thing is, is, to educate people mm -hmm. if they make mistakes if they do something doesn't matter how wrong you have to figure out <coughs> excuse me you have to figure out whether it was done out of ignorance mm -hmm. was it done maliciously yeah you know whatever i have not found anybody that has done something maliciously yeah. to harm me or harm a customer or something else yeah i've seen people be negligent because they're not thinking yeah. Uh, and then, you know, that's not worth firing somebody. That's worth, you know, yeah, giving them a little them. slap in the back of the head. I mean, you yeah. know, I mean, let's wake them up and, yes. and say, yeah. you know, you could do this. Yeah. And I have had this situation where people have done something where it could have harmed somebody. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and again, you, you know, you let them know the severity of what they've done. Of course. But I've not had anybody do something so severe that I felt that, that I needed to fire them. Okay. Usually, usually people, in, in again, in our environment here, our cultural environment here, um, you're not going to have people doing things. Um, I mean, you know, from America, you know, you have people there doing things to hurt people just to hurt people. Yeah. You know, just doing something because they can. Yeah. And you don't have that here uh, you know, the different cultures we yes. have, the Filipino culture, the Indian culture, the Pakistan mm -hmm. culture, mm -hmm. you know, all these cultures, it, it's, it would be the far outside exception to their cultural thing that that one person wanted to harm somebody. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. you don't have that within our cultural environment here, which yeah. we're lucky. Yeah, of course. You know. But in general, I've also seen that if you train people properly, if you guide them properly, generally they are there to follow because they are here to work. They want to generally be good at their work. They don't want to be scolded by a hygiene manager or QC manager or by the chef. So they usually tend to follow the rules. But yeah, if there is a negligence, you have to bring them back into reality sometimes. Well, usually when a chef loses his temper, things start flying around the kitchen. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't, do, I don't do that anymore. I don't yell. I don't yell. I don't. I don't use profanity. I don't yeah. throw. I don't throw pots and pans or knives. Uh, <laughs> you know that, that's that's long gone. But uh, no, I, I agree with you. If you train people properly, yeah. if you incentivize people, yes. If you appreciate people and let them know they're appreciated, yep. Uh, this is something I feel is is missing in a lot of kitchens. Absolutely. Um, you know, I I may hire you know two or three really good chefs mm -hmm. and they may they may be better chefs than me. Mm -hmm. I don't ever take responsibility. I mean, I don't take their um, credit for their work. Absolutely. I take credit for hiring them. Absolutely. Yeah. I take credit for being smart enough to hire that person. Yeah. Uh, I don't need to take credit for their food. Yeah. And most people see that when they're around me that I yeah. I will immediately give somebody credit for something if if somebody starts complimenting, you know, I let the person that does the food take the compliments. That's true. You know, that's again, I kind of a uh, real leadership. Chef. Yeah, that's true. So, in the end, what would be your uh, message to the small audience which we have in our channel? Uh, this video will go on uh, the seventh of uh, June on the World Food Safety Day. So, what will be your uh, you know message to the people who are watching? Just when you cook, just cook from the heart. Yeah. You know, they, they cook from the heart, know the ingredients you're using. Um, I, 
I store things in the back of my head. I, I taste everything, even a spice or something that, that is, isn't by itself necessarily edible. Uh, you know, but you still need to know uh, the flavors of what you're doing. Yeah. You know, educate yourself. Um, you know, shows like this, uh, you know, where, where you do your reviews on, on, on uh, restaurants and everything else. Those are beneficial with it as you hear somebody's, you know, professional opinion about a dish, yeah. about food. Um, great, you know, with the internet. I mean, you know, I like I said, I I did I was started when there was no internet. Yeah. So I have I have amassed a collection of probably 250, 300 uh, cookbooks. A lot of vintage wow. cookbooks. Um, Someday I would like to see that collection, chef. So well, you have to come to America on that one. I've only I only have. I think about 40 here. Okay. So I have about 40 cookbooks I've, I've accumulated here. But, um, you know, you, you learn. Uh, and again, as everything comes back around, uh, you know, old dishes that, that were 20 years ago, you know, that everybody, you know, now they're retro dishes. Now they're yeah. coming back. Yeah. Beef Wellington is yes. one. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, Beef Wellington went away. Uh, nobody wanted to touch it because yeah. it was so antiquated. Now Beef Wellington is coming back, so, yeah, um, you know, and with slight, slight twists, mm -hmm. you know, because again, we've we've cultivated new tastes. Yeah. Um, so, you know, everything is is cyclical. Mm -hmm. Everything goes in a cycle. So, um, you know, I recommend getting old cookbooks or finding online, you know, older recipes, mm -hmm. uh, you know, stuff from 10, 20, 30 years ago. Yeah. Um, you know, and we can look at it as it was then, and then see how we can make it um, even better. better yeah. You know, a better a better food. Yeah, uh, Del Monte restaurant in New York. Yeah, uh, from the 1800s. I I have a couple of their original cookbooks, wow. um, and you know, this is in, they they created a steak called the Delmonico steak. Okay. Okay, which was part of ribeye. Okay. It's the small end of the ribeye. Okay. And, and of which there are only three cuts of, you know, that you can get out of that before you start getting in to the big cut of the, of the yeah. ribeye. So, you know, they created that as a, as a steak under their name called the Delmonico steak. Okay. Okay. So again, you, you go into a restaurant now, there is no Delmonico steak. Yeah. But again, as, as a chef, I'm looking at it. Can I revive some of these old recipes? Uh, with with a current twist on them, uh, you know, yeah. a current day, um, you know, uh, adage to it that again, we didn't cross culture so much mm -hmm. thirty years ago. Absolutely, yeah. You know, the French cook in France; they cooked. Yeah. Okay. Unless you went to France, <clears throat> which I did. Yeah. Uh, you weren't exposed to that. Yeah. You know, and you know, I mean, I was born in in the southern part of the United States. Uh, there was no Chinese restaurant, no Japanese restaurant when I was yeah. a kid. Okay, there was none of this, you know, uh, uh, cul cultural things outside of, you know, what was Southern cooking. Yeah. You know, what was country cooking. Absolutely. You know, there was no luxury, you know, everything was built around, uh, you know, the cult, the, the country culture. Yeah. Of that area. So, um, you know, taking some of those dishes mm -hmm. and, Tweaking them and bringing them back, yeah, has has a, you know afforded me a lot of uh, new ideas that people nice. think are new, but they're old. Yeah, <laughs> you know, my, my I use my grandmother's uh, um, what's it called it uh, banana bread recipe. Yeah, it's 120 years old. I haven't changed it. Yeah, it's 120 years old. It's 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 a great recipe. I don't need to change it. Absolutely. You know, so so, so chef, thank, thank you for your time. My pleasure. We need to do another session maybe later on, which is more uh, on <laughs> on your R&D prowess. Uh, today it was more about food safety and the current trend. Thank you for your time. I know you are really busy and uh, thank you again. My pleasure. Thank you.